And then, yeah, man, if it's cool, I just want to kind of kick off the conversation by asking you about your uh, your blueprint process. And I know you have the video yards on your LinkedIn profile, <laughs> but if you're cool with kind of just talking through some of that, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I'm so grateful. So to give you an understanding about how I think about cold email is that we, we would kind of have to go back a little bit and talk about uh, the way that people are still doing it and the way they've been doing it for about a decade. And it's just not working anymore, which is you use these uh, legacy tools like sales loft and outreach. You send a sequence that's where you get data from Apollo or zoom info and you're trying to hack attention. So, yeah. you know, you'll see a lot of people like, Oh, I'm going to throw in a GIF or I'm going to like, um, you know, I'm going to do this like intro line. Right. And I think that's just totally fundamentally broken. Um, and so my process is much different. It is really trying to help you articulate who is perfect for you, why you, uh, who is 10 times better uh, for you than some other company and why. And don't tell me because they're in the computer software industry, yeah. right? <laughs> like, um, it's like, uh, and th those theories, and to give you an example of like one of what these theories look like, I do some work for a company called Stage, and yeah. they um, they have some history helping. Like, for example, they one of their um, co-founders used to work at Loom and increase their uh, sort of bottom line pricing by eleven hundred percent in like six months with only pricing changes. So one of the insights that they had was, Jordan, it's if people are charging per gigabyte. Uh, it's really hard for them to know if they're giving away too much value at each of their tiers. So like it might be that in your free tier, you're giving away way too much by allowing um, like crazy high limits and people are actually getting commercial value and you should lower that tier. So figuring out exactly where to place that line has huge implications on your revenue. So you can imagine the perfect people to target in this case are folks that have a pricing page, they have a free tier, they are charging per gigabyte, they have a lot of traffic to their website, right? Like the, there's, um, you know, 10 different things that make someone perfect for this play. And if you can programmatically identify those 10 things and filter down a market, suddenly your message becomes really easy because yeah. it's all about the uh, sort of deep hypothesis about why they need you, why they need you now. And you can quantify that too, right? Especially because you have some understanding of their traffic. You've got some understanding of like general conversion rates. So I can back into approximately how many people are converting on your site and say, hey, if these amount of people are converting to your free plan, that means that you could be losing X or Y number of people in your paid plan because you don't really know where those uh, where those lines are. So that's like an example of sort of end to end how I think about it. And my goal in the agency is to give you a question that is like, Jed, assume you had unlimited amounts of time to write and research the perfect email. Yeah. What would that look like? And then I step back and help you automate that test to see if you know your market as well as you think you do. I, that's awesome. Man. I have so many questions off of that because uh, I think what you're talking about, like finding the, the, you know, 10 things, for example, that make you a perfect fit for that customer. Most people maybe take that only two steps forward. So they'll find like one or two things, right. And most companies that I've worked with, they tend to have a very generic, maybe basic ICP, right. But you're saying, take it multiple steps deeper, really filter it down to your perfect market. Um, that's super interesting. Can you tell me how you're actually automating this? Cause my understanding is that you're using AI and different tools, maybe looking at job postings. Uh, what can you share about that process, um, in terms of automating that so that, you know, you don't have to spend hours writing that email. Yeah. Um, so there's two pieces, uh, to this first is the automation and the system set up. And most teams don't have any of that infrastructure at all. Um, yeah. I mean, you sell into these folks, so, you know, um, yeah. Uh, so there's like multiple pieces to this. There's first being able to collect the data and my company licenses like over $300,000 uh, a year of data. And we are a first party data provider of jobs. So we're actively scraping hundreds of thousands of company websites every single day and saving that into a database. 
Um, and so like one of our plays might involve uh, information found inside of job descriptions. And by the way, anyone can use my tool at intent.blueprintgtm.com and play okay. with it. Um, so, and the whole goal is really what we do in the process is I flip the way that you think about targeting. Most people think about targeting like I target uh, B2B SaaS in North America between 100 and 500 employees. Yeah. It's like, not really. Um, those are, you don't know, the, the problem is you don't know the job to be done, right? It's a Clayton Christensen framework about what problem is this company struggling with? Um, and job descriptions are one way to sort of know that. There's a lot of rich intelligence in them. Um, so anyways, the once you kind of know exactly the problem that you have, I use a handful of different tools to be able to synthesize that problem and launch a campaign every week. So really the way that I think about my service is like, I don't do lead generation. I test your best ideas against the market. And, mm -hmm. and like, let me tell you, like in a hot market, um, and, and that is like, what I mean by that is that where a lot of people need your service, it's like not well covered. Uh, you can send a bad message at scale and it will work exceptionally well. Um, yeah. And so as the market becomes more like you're in a pretty competitive market with the stuff that Mailshake does. And so yep. it's totally different than I had a friend of mine that was selling uh, no code or low code documentation. So specific, right? So yeah. all these people that had built on Airtable or Zapier, and when they went on vacation, all the stuff that their company was built on broke. And when it broke, mm -hmm. they, no, that called me on vacation. So it's yeah. like, we got a five to 7% pause reply rate with like bad messages. It just yeah. literally described what we did, which is like terrible. I would never do that for most clients and it worked. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, so sorry, circling back to your original question, the system. So most of the uh, data stuff that I do is um uh, is inside of clay um and so uh, uh yeah so clay has basically has brought in a lot of data providers and allows me to do sort of complex waterfall enrichment i do have some custom machine learning uh, uh folks that i work with uh, that company is called uh Padable. and uh they are uh sort of a bespoke tam scoring company so they'll score your entire total addressable market and one thing we're doing with them, for example, is like, tell me approximately how many physical locations this restaurant has. Cause mm -hmm. I'm working with a company called Spot AI and they're like, Jordan, we know that like at about 30 restaurants, the IT director, like it, there's always issues that happen at restaurants. Like, you know, someone gets into a fight or like there's an HR issue and you need to access that camera footage. And every time they have to go call the like the local manager like go down with the usb stick right they know so much about this problem at this exact inflection point but like yeah. it's really hard to find how many restaurants so like they went and did that for us um i can do this with jobs so like i can say like first hire people say like in their job description you'll be the first head of sdr so like one of the plays that we run which is like pretty consistent is if you have a job that you've never had before, you're super open to new ideas. So yeah. you're like, hey, Jed, like, like you just became a VP of sales, like, and it looks like you've only ever been an account executive. Like, like, are you open to X or Y ideas? Like the answer is yes, because you're like, shit, I don't want to get fired. Like, yeah. I, like this is the first time I've been a VP of sales. And the only reason I'm here is because everyone else got laid off. And like, I was the last yeah. man standing, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying that about you, but like, um, yeah. but like that, that's, uh, yeah, so those are those are kind of some principles about how this works. And then there's the whole like domain warming stuff where it's like you yep. have to like multiple inboxes, you're not supposed to send more than 50 messages a day per inbox. Um, and so there's the it, the uh, architecture and scaling piece of this to make sure that you can test. Um, and then you have to do this every week, Jed, which is really yep. important. Um, so my sort of the pitch of my agency is like, I take your best idea to market every week. So it's mm -hmm. like, if it works, great. We just scale it and we don't need humans. I just turn the volume up. Um, uh, if it doesn't work, I come back to you and I'm like, all right, Jed, that, that failed miserably. What do we do now? Um, yeah. So it's that iteration that I'm selling. Um, uh, and then after you've done this enough times, uh, it's, it's usually, it's like a, it's like either you find it right away or you like walk in the desert for a while and then yeah. like something either pops or they don't have product market fit at all. Um, and then once you kind of find it, then you can um, scale it.
Yeah, I, I, that's super interesting. I, one thing I'm curious about, because you, you touched on it at the beginning, which is like the the way people, most people are doing cold email, and I've seen it in a lot of different places, is is pretty outdated. It's pretty basic, right? You know, you get leads from Zoom Info, whatnot, upload it into a basic sequencer, maybe do some minimal personalization, just send it out. So from your perspective, what do you think, you know, if, if, if I'm like a sales manager listening to this or an SDR or an account executive, what do you think is a solution? Do you think it's a good idea for companies to invest in these kind of complex infrastructures or outsource that? Is there like small steps they can take to improve that process? Um, I'm curious what you thought about that. Well, I mean, this is so hard because it's really complex, right? And so it's like, yeah. um, so for example, if you're getting 20 to 30% open rates on your email, fix that immediately, right? It's like, that means yeah. that most of your messages aren't getting in the inbox, right? So yep. it's like, and that's like, there's lots of tools to do this. We use Smart Lead. Um, mm -hmm. uh, so go buy multiple domains, like go read up on that and fix your infrastructure. Then once you have the infrastructure, uh, what you really need to do is figure out like, what's the best thing that I can say? And, um, you know, and it doesn't matter if you use outsourcers or clay, like both tools are great. Um, yeah. Uh, you you need to test this in like in our campaigns we test in like 200 to a thousand person increments you don't really need more and if you do more you screw your domains so yeah. it's like it's like if you send a bad message at scale you're going to mark to spam etc so really what you need to do is you need to build the like you know you ask a question like hey how can i get started it's like um i don't know work out every day <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. like so <laughs> it's like you sort of have to build that infrastructure you have to build the domain warming infrastructure you have to build the like email finding and contact information. And then the hardest part is figuring out what do you have to say to these folks? Like what, what yeah. do you have to say that's particularly interesting? And then you can start to do some really interesting stuff with AI. But I think where people get stuck is the like, I don't know how to quantify the pain. I don't know where to look. Yep. Um, and I, I, I can share it with you, but I have a whole, I created a, a GPT sequence that tries to replicate my thinking. Um, uh, so it's like, you can enter in your information, who you target. And it's like, what data sources can help me find this? What data sources would I care about? What are the key inflection points that companies might have where they need me? How would I find those? What would I say at those key inflection points? So I'll share that ChatGPT sequence with you. Um, that might be a good way to start too, because it will at least get your mind in this sort of, um, uh, uh, you know, sort, sort of the the mindset about how to think about this and not this sort of sequence way. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's super interesting. And I, and I think what you said too is um, it re resonates with me where you said that, that the biggest friction point is actually understanding what do you have to say? What are the pain points? How do you describe that? Who are the mm -hmm. best fit for you? I think that's where people get stuck most of the time. And I'm sure you've had clients where they came to you and they say, this is our best go to market strategy. You run that, you figure out it doesn't work. Um, how have you, or, or I guess, what would you recommend people do to figure mm -hmm. that out? Right? Yeah. Like yeah. So, um, you just have the world's greatest cheat code in your customers. Um, yeah. and the, I talked about this with, with Morgan on the B2B power hour and what people think uh, is that when they're testing sequences, they're throwing spaghetti at a wall, but yeah. really you're, sp you're throwing spaghetti into the universe because you're not anchored on anything. Um, and so if you're not anchored on a customer, right, if you don't have an idea that you're even in the right galaxy, let alone the right planet, let alone the right city and location, um, you're, you'll just, you'll never find it. And so yeah. people think that they're just trying to crack attention. Like if only I could get Jordan's attention, but no, what they need to crack is like, when a customer comes to you, uh, they'll say stuff. you will be like, Hey Jed, like, I, I, like I'll challenge you. I'll be like, Jed, I don't think you should buy me. I'm like really yeah. expensive. I'm like, like, why don't you just go do it yourself? And you're going to say something that I've like never heard before. And you'll be like, actually, Jordan, it's not that it's that we had to like lay off our SDR team. And, um, you know, and also because we just raised, we have like really high expectations for sales. And, um, and then my domains like just got spammed and I can't, and I worked with this other agency and that, so it's like, that is all super rich information and I don't have yeah. to invent it. You just tell it to me. And if I'm good at extracting that of the customer and I've got the best connection with the customer, then all you have to do is try to find the folks in the market that were in your same shoes at the same time. Um, and, 
And that's the question that you need to answer before you go start trying messaging. You just yeah. cannot improve your messaging if you don't know why your customer buy you. Yeah, I liked it a lot. One, one thing I'm curious about too is because uh, you use AI in your process. You mentioned you use ChatGPT. Oh, yeah. And so I want to hear your opinion on like all the generative AI tools, the way people are talking about using ChatGPT. What works? What do you think doesn't work? It's fucking yeah. terrible the way they're talking about it. <laughs> um, because because <laughs> I saw it. someone sent me a message the other day. I mean, they, they sent me a screenshot of a message that says, um, hey, like, your name's Pamela. Do you know that means like white? That's why you so pale. Ah, just kidding. Like, and it's like, like they just like they, they're they, and what they did is they said, "Yo, ChatGPT, like, write some provocative thing to get this person to respond." But it goes off the rails. So I have a framework here, which is the best way to use AI is creative constraint with context. And so I, I'm going to give you an example of what that looks like for my business. So, uh, my value prop with the jobs data is like I can sort all of the jobs on the market by the problems that talk the most about uh, what you can help with someone, right? So it's like, what is the job that talks about like email deliverability and like sequences and like buy tools to like help our sales team, right? Um, but to do that, I need to know who you are. I need to know what you, like I need to know a little bit about your ICP, right? And that takes time. Uh, but ChatGPT can help with this. So what I do is I can feed it with clay. I can say, here is Mailshake's company description. Uh, here is uh, a little bit more about who they are. I can pull in their website. Now I want you to pretend that you are the, like first tell me who they sell to. Pretend you're the VP at this company, VP of sales. Tell me who they sell to. Now, once you tell me who they sell to, I want you to write a sentence. If you could search a Google-like thing for jobs, what sentence would you write? Mm. And then I take that sentence and now I know kind of your ICP and I feed that back into my tool. And then I get the top three results and I send you the top three results. So I send a message like, hey, Jed, like it seems like you target these types of people and really people that are struggling with these types of things. I did a search for you. Here are three jobs that seem to talk the most about your problem. Um, like, do you want me to send you the, like, is, is three enough for you? Um, yeah. So that's like, it's creative, right? It's like, it made up who the company was targeting, right? But it had, um, it had context, right? It had context, the company description, it had the, um, and it's constrained. I said, only do this one thing. I didn't say like, in, write an email, right? And then it just starts going off. And so um, it can, it's really, really, really useful. It's very, very creative, but you need to give it a lane in which to be creative. And yeah. that is the difference of like the people that are using this to write great emails. It's stuff that an SDR, if they spent all day, they, they couldn't write today. Yeah. That's super powerful. Yeah. I think anybody listening to this, that's exactly what I would do if I'm like an SDR and I'm seeing all of the different generative AI tools, the top 10 GPT prompts to write an email, all that stuff. So no, this is really good. Jordan, um, like I said, I like to keep the podcast to around 15 minutes. And I think this was a really good episode, um, particularly with all the podcasts and the webinars I'm hearing, this stuff kind of really uh, stands out in terms of what's really working today. So I appreciate you sharing it. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Jordan is the founder of Blueprint. Jordan, anywhere you want to point the audience or anything you want to leave them with? Uh, yeah, I would just say go to blueprintgtm.com and uh, I'm just Jordan at blueprintgtm.com. I post a lot on LinkedIn. I'm more than happy to help. I'm not a venture backed uh, business. And so I don't have any like quarterly goals or anything. So <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm more than happy to help you. Even if there's like no commercial relationship, um, please do reach out. Uh, thanks so much for having me, Jed. Yeah, good stuff.